Man, we appreciate being here. It's good to meet a bunch of you guys. Good to see you again. And um, it's just good to know that uh, there's some people that believe like you in other areas. Just just try to do the same thing you're trying to do. We're doing it right there in the middle of Dallas, Fort Worth. And, and uh, people are still scared. Man, it's so weird. You, you go up and try to knock on a door and they look at you like you have leprosy, you know. There's still people driving around in cars by themselves with masks on and stuff. <laughs> How dumb is that? That was dumb in the middle of the thing. <laughs> and I thought it was over. We tried to declare it over a bunch of times, but I don't know. That's weird. All right, let's get right to it. Let's go to Mark chapter number five. Mark chapter number five. I love this story. And as I was reading, sometimes you read something over and over again. And sometimes it's real easy to, to miss some of the details. So one of the things I've done to help my reading comprehension is as I read a story, I just pretend to be somebody in the story every time. And if it has 20 characters, it's gonna get read a lot. So sometimes I read and I'm Jesus, that's pretty cool, and uh, it's awkward. And, uh, and then sometimes, you know, sometimes you're the devil, you know, there you go, that's flashbacks. And then uh, so sometimes, you know, you're a good character, sometimes you're one of the bad characters, but I, I just run through and I just read the same story over and over. And so when I got to verse 21 in this chapter, there's a guy there named Jairus, and when I read the story, being him, as I read, I'm Jairus. And so as I read through the story, it had a strange effect on me. And, and it's become one of my favorite stories just because when you pastor a while, you see people go through things that other church members don't know about. It's nobody's business. But they're having private struggles, they're having private storms. There's a lot going on behind a smile and a handshake that we never get to see. And when, you've, when you're pastoring for a while, you know, you're like, how does this person function? How do, they, how, how, how do they manage a smile? And you just know that God is doing something in their life and you're praying for them and, and you don't even know if they show up. And they show up in a way where, where God just does something in their life and nobody else even knows there's a problem. And you know that they are literally hanging on the edge of, of just losing everything. And I really appreciate people that just keep going no matter what. Amen. Just, you know, as Baptists, there's lots of things we don't do. And if we have bad habits, we need to quit those. But one of the worst habits that we have as Baptists that, need, that we need to quit is quitting. There's just a lot of people. Can you imagine, can you imagine in, in six or seven years how packed out this place would be if nobody had ever quit? Just think about you. I mean, you you guys would be back out in the yard. You'd probably be in a big building program somewhere, and and uh, and and you know you may have dreams and aspirations of being in a different place. You will miss this place if you ever leave this place. You'll miss it. And uh, we we were in a storefront for a little, about a year, a little over a year, and uh, and we bought a building. And man, there's times I was like, dude, if we had just had parking, we had three parking spots, and if we had just had, if we had just had. Man, that's a pretty good beat going on. What are we doing over here? <laughs> Sorry, I have adult onset ADD. What is that? It's a karate studio. Oh, okay. It's, it's our choir. It's our choir. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. You know? so somebody's over painting the fence and wash and wax the car and all that. All right, I'm for it. That's cool. Usually at our church, there's somebody wearing headphones and I can still hear it, you know. But uh, it makes you want to throw a songbook at them. <laughs> But I, I'm just always impressed when, when, uh, when people stay by the stuff and, and, and when people don't, you're almost surprised when people don't quit. Because I know God can do anything, but convincing other people that God can get them through a struggle, through a disappointment, through something. And this story helped me so much, helped me so much. You're, you wouldn't know this, but every once in a while, even a preacher in his family have a problem, an illness, a disappointment, or something along those lines. And uh, this story helped me a bunch. Now, I don't know what y'all do here. At our place, we stand. I just feel lonely right now. Would y'all stand? <laughs> All alone in a crowd. I just want to read a few verses here. Mark chapter 5, verse 21. And when Jesus was passed over again by a ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. 
And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she will live. Now for sake of time, slide down to verse 41. And he took the damsel by the hand. And he said unto her, Talitha kumi, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of twelve years. And they were astonished with a great astonishment. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it, and commanded that something should be given her to eat. So you have the problem, the prayer, and then the answered prayer. And for sake of time, we skipped over all of those other verses. Don't you wish it was that way in life? We got like half a chapter. Really? I had the problem. I said the prayer. I need the solution. In your perfect timing, Lord, especially if it's right now. But instead, it didn't happen that way. Now, we know something that Jairus didn't know. We skipped to the end. Like us, in real life, Jairus doesn't get to skip to the end. Jairus has to endure the rest of the chapter. So I want to focus on the rest of the chapter. Father in heaven, we love you. Lord, I pray that you'd just be with the preaching of your word tonight. I pray that you'd uh, encourage somebody, uh, help somebody just be steadfast because of your word. And Father, I pray that you'd bless now the reading and preaching in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And you can be seated. Jairus, it says he's one of the leaders in the synagogue. He's their man of God. He's the guy that everybody would look to. He's the guy that uh, these people at, during this time, you know, they go to the synagogue and he's one of the leaders. He's the guy who's supposed to have all the answers. He doesn't have the answers. He's done all he can do. But he's looking for Jesus. He knows that Jesus can take care of this. Can I encourage you tonight? Jesus can still take care of all of our problems. Amen. The Lord can still take care of all of our problems. And He may not answer tonight, even though He could. Right. And you're like, but I, you know, why wouldn't He answer tonight? Because He doesn't need to. Right. By the way, and you don't need Him to. Sometimes problems come along to put us in a different place. Sometimes problems come along to uh, nudge us to a different spiritual level. Right. Sometimes you, like the ladies were singing, sometimes you got to go through the storm. You don't appreciate good days until you have some bad days. I heard somebody one time, they, they said, man, I wish every day was a great day. And I thought about it a while. I was like, man, that's dumb. That's pretty dumb. Because if you only had good days, you'd quit appreciating them. Every once in a while, you need to slam your door, hand in the door. Every once in a while, you need to run out of gas. Every, every once in a while, you need to have a flat tire. Every once in a while, you need somebody to yell at you. Right. Every once in a while, you need to have a door slammed in your face. Ain't going to be somebody getting saved behind every door. Yeah. Right. Sometimes you need to remember that, that it, it's not... It's easy, but it's difficult. It's so easy to be saved, but people have to get over themselves. Amen. They gotta get, sometimes you've got to help them get lost. That's right. yeah. Sometimes you've got to help them realize that they're not righteous. Sometimes you got to help them to realize that they have a need. Amen. And sometimes they're so hard headed, they're so pig headed that, that you may not be able to reap the harvest that night. You may just plant a seed. You may water something that somebody else planted. Maybe somebody's already presented the gospel and they're like, man, maybe God's talking to me. This is the second, third time I've heard that. It took three, God, three clear gospel presentations with a dead baby for me to get saved. My sister had a baby out of wedlock. She was still living at home. She was 16 years old. And uh, baby Bradley, and when he was six weeks old, he died of Sid's death. It was her first night back to work. She was working at a gas station. She didn't have a husband. She was just trying to earn some money and get a place. And uh, she went to work the very first night she went there. Baby Bradley laid there. And the best they could explain, he forgot to breathe. And his heart stopped beating. And they said if there had been 100 doctors there, it wouldn't have helped. It was sudden infant death syndrome. And he died, and it was a nightmare for our family. 
We didn't have a preacher. We lived in these apartments there in South Euless, and uh, somebody sent a preacher by. It, through the middle of the night, the, the sirens came, the fire department came, the ambulance, the police, and then the coroner came, and they carried out a little bitty bag with a little bitty six-week-old baby in there. And our family was destroyed. I was sitting outside as somebody's preacher showed up, and uh, he talked to my sister, and he talked to my parents, and I just couldn't deal with it. I went outside, and I was sitting on the stairs, and he came out, and he was talking to me, and we, we talked about the baby going to heaven, and, and I said, I just want to see Bradley. I just want Bradley. I just want Bradley. And he said, well, you'll... You're nine years old. Have you ever gotten in trouble? I said, sure. And he said, so do you know the difference between right and wrong? I said, yes. He said, then you'll never see Bradley unless you're saved. I didn't understand what all that meant. But the preacher went through the gospel presentation, and I did not get saved that day. A few days later, we had the funeral for the baby. And uh, the preacher preached the gospel, and I did not get saved. The preacher came over again the next Saturday, and he was looking for me. He went in and talked to my parents. They were screaming, yelling at each other, and uh, that's just what we did in those days. And uh, so they were fussing and fighting. Our family was in chaos. And so he couldn't do that, but I was outside, and there were so many kids playing around. We couldn't sit on the stairs and talk. So I went and sat in the preacher's big old Cadillac car, and he, uh, he presented the gospel again. And it had already clicked. It had already clicked through the, through the week and uh, I was ready, and I understood, and I trusted the Lord Jesus Christ, and I prayed and asked God to save me. Amen. That sure took a lot. I think about that a lot. I don't know what it took for you to get saved. Maybe you were doing pretty good. Maybe you were just having a rough day. Somebody knocked on your door and uh, held a Bible under your nose, and that's all it took. We didn't, nobody came and knocked on our door. It took a dead baby. That sure makes me not want to quit. Amen. I know what it cost. My sister ended up drinking herself to death. Sometimes you got to go through some pretty rough things. Now I think, man, we've had churches started out of our church. We've sent missionaries around the world. We support more than 80 missionaries around the world. We've seen a lot of souls get saved. We've seen Amen. families put back together. And I just think, you know, what if that preacher hadn't come back? Amen. What? Would another preacher have started our church? Would they, would they love our people? Would they encourage them to go out and go soul winning? Would they, would they care about missionaries and, and starting churches like ours around the world? Would it matter? Would it matter to anybody else? I, I don't know. But I know what the cost was. And it was something that had to happen. Listen, baby Bradley's fine. Bradley's been fine now for, man, I was nine, so that's 40, 42 years. What a nightmare. I was nine years old, but I trusted the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hey, friend, it's good to be saved. Because yes, here's the deal. The trials are coming anyway. Right, right. The trials are coming. Listen, you, hey, it's good to be saved. Yes, sir. And the trials are coming whether you're going to heaven or whether you're going to hell. You're still going to have problems. Right. You're going to do it with Christ or you're going to do it without. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Man, I'm glad somebody took time to present the gospel to me. Amen. Well, look, he didn't get to skip, so we're going to go through. Look at verse 24. Jairus had just said, You come and you touch my little daughter and I know she'll live. And Jesus went with him and much people followed him and thronged him. Can I tell you, that had to be a big distraction. Everybody coming out. Now, I read it. I, I read it first, and I read it again, and I read it again, and then all of a sudden I was Jairus. 12 year old. My 13 year old sitting back there. My 10 year old sitting back there. I cannot imagine losing one of my kids. And he said that she's lying at the point of death, and he was not exaggerating. I cannot imagine what it would be like to have a child grow up in your home and you love them all their life and now they're hanging in the balance. And you've got the answer. All you got to do is get Jesus there and everything's going to be fine. And all of these people are thronging around and thronging around and they're slowing down. Me, I, he's supposed to be their man of God. He's a leader of the synagogue. 
Listen, I, I wouldn't be feeling real pastorly at that moment if my kid's lying at the point of death. I'm going to be out front going, get out of the way, get out of the way, move, 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 move. People are like, preacher, preacher, shut up, move. I'll get with you later. Because you know, somebody will know that your baby's lying at the point of death. and there's a, Preacher, I got this hangnail over here. It's swollen. I can feel my heart beating, my pinky. You're like, who cares? Cut it off. I don't care. Cut it off with the third knuckle. I don't care. You'll live through that. My daughter's at the point of death. But you know, there are some distractions that come up in life. It may be a job offer. It may be just a crowd of people around. It might be a, a, an opportunity that you get. There's a lot of people who've quit. They've quit on the Lord. They've quit on the Lord's work because of distractions. Jairus wasn't giving up. Jairus was not giving up. It says they thronged him. That's all right. Now watch this. We know there's going to be a miracle, amen? We know that, right? Because we skipped ahead. Jairus don't know a thing about it. This story is crazy because there's a famous miracle in the middle of the miracle. Right in the middle of Jairus' miracle, another more famous. Not everybody knows about Jairus' daughter. Everybody knows about the woman with the issue of blood. Her miracle is tucked in the middle of his miracle. Check this out. And a certain woman in verse 25, which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing bettered but rather grew worse when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? Hey, Jesus, who cares? Sick daughter, sick daughter. But I had an issue of blood. You've had it 12 years. When we pr- hey, when we print out, when we print out the prayer list, we don't have to write your name in, sister. It's been on there for 12 years. You're printed out. Pray for salvations. Pray for not good numbers. Pray for this. And sister so-and-so. You're in hard copy, sweetie. We don't even write you in. You were printed out. I'm telling you, back then, 2,000 years ago, every single time they printed out the church bulletin, her name was right in there. It was right in there on the prayer list. (laughs) Who touched me? Who gives a rip? Dude, who touched my clothes? And the disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and thou sayest, Who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. You know what that whole portion I just read? You know what the worst three words are? All the truth. Now, I know nobody at this church is this way, but there are some people at our church, I don't ask them how they're doing. You know why? Because I have other places to go. And they will gladly tell you all the truth. I mean, they'll tell you about bursitis and arthritis and every other itis they got. They, they'll tell you about their kids not doing right and how nobody comes. And they're just lonely. They need somebody to talk to. And if you mess up and say, how you doing, sis? They're going to tell you. They'll tell you all the truth. (laughs) You notice Mark knew all the truth. Remember back over here it said, uh, uh, the woman, she had suffered many things and many physicians. Oh, I went to this doctor. And then I had to go to Baylor for the specialist. And then I had to do this. And I had to do that. Oh, and that medicine, I had a reaction to it. And I was this and that. You know the one. You can't ask them how they're doing. They'll tell you. (laughs) Let me just pray and go on. I ain't trying to be ugly, but my 12-year-old's dying. Now we got a delay. It was bad enough that all these people were walking around, holding us up, thronging Jesus. Ain't got time for no thronging. (laughs) And now you got sister so-and-so talking about this doctor and that doctor. Oh, Jesus, you ain't going to believe this. All the truth. I didn't write that. It's in the Bible. 
all the truth. Right. And it was a delay. Good. You want to know why that seat right there is empty? That, those four seats right there? Because something didn't happen fast enough for somebody. They didn't get their prayer answered fast enough. So they can't show up no more. They're busy. See, they couldn't get their prayer answered fast enough to suit them. And because of the delay, they just had to move on. They had to go find them another church. They had to go find them another job. They had to move away from the people that love them and care about them and are grounded in the Word of God. They had to go, to, they had to go hear Brother Feel Good. They, they had to go somewhere where uh, they, you know, they could say what they see till they see what they say. They had to go somewhere where I tie my bow tie, you tie your bow tie, and they have special miracle and healing services between 6 and 8 on Thursdays. Why? Because they're looking for something better. There ain't nothing better than Jesus and the Word of God. Can I tell you, if the distractions don't get you, you better watch out because the delays will. Your family member won't get saved fast enough. Your wife won't get right with God fast enough. Your, your kids won't get right with God fast enough. Your husband won't get right with God fast enough. And all of a sudden you'll think it ain't working. Good. And you won't like the delay. You won't like the delay. Things aren't happening on your time frame. I always jokingly say, Lord, you know, in your perfect timing, especially if it's right now. Because what I'd like to do is for the sake of time, let's pass all these other things. And let's just get with the program, okay? I know you're going to solve the problem. So I don't need to take this uh, journey down a, a rough road. I don't need to go through a storm. I know what the storms look like. I'm the guy that preaches about the storms. I'm the guy that prays other people through their storms. I'm the guy that holds their hand when they're sick. I'm the guy that holds their hand when they die. I'm the guy that does the funeral and tries to comfort the family. Why would, you, why would I need anything, Lord? Because God knows more than I do, and sometimes I need to take my, take my sweet time and just get through the storm. Hey, friend, if the distractions don't get you, the delays will. But we skipped some other verses, too. Might as well keep reading. She's telling him all the truth. And you think that isn't a big deal? I'm telling you it's a big deal, dude. Look at the next verse. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? She wasn't just sick, man. She was dying. And Jesus got held up in this big crowd. And Jesus didn't get there fast enough. And Jesus was delayed. And then this old woman, we, listen, we love her. We love her. She's a sweet lady. Even she hadn't been to church. And listen, she had not been to their place of worship for 12 years. She was bleeding. Unclean. Unclean. Everybody knew her. Everybody saw her. Everybody heard from her. But she, she couldn't go. She hadn't been able to be around her family much. Under the law, she was unclean. She's bleeding. Right. She had blood issuing out of her. Twelve years is a long time, man. But twelve years and about an hour and a half ain't going to be that big a deal. An hour and a half more wouldn't have been a big deal. Jesus could have still healed her. Jesus could have done everything for everybody. Can you imagine? The Lord is turning back. He's turned away from him. Jairus is trying to lead the way. People are like, what's going on? Oh, we know her. She's unclean, right? No, nah, she ain't unclean no more. Amen. She's all healed up. And then all of a sudden somebody comes up and taps him on the shoulder and says, Hey, don't worry about it. Your daughter's. She's dead. See, if the, if the distractions don't get you and the delays don't get you, disappointment will get you. That was everything he was there for. The only reason he was seeking Jesus was for his daughter, and now she's dead. He's got to go home and dig a hole. A 12-year-old size hole. 
How do you think his wife's going to feel? Baby girl sitting there. Mama, where's daddy? Where's daddy? Mama, it hurts so bad. Where's daddy? He's coming, baby. He's coming. In her mind, she's thinking, where's daddy? And mama had to be there and hold that baby girl's hand by herself while she died. What kind of a man leaves his wife to be there as their child is dying? One that's just trying to get God to do something, that's who. Amen. Listen, the disappointments will get you. You've got to run the scenarios. You've got to run the scenarios through your head. You know what? If we get evicted, God's still good. If so-and-so dies, God's still good. Hey, family, just in case you need to know, if I die, God's still good. Don't worry about daddy's dead. Tell him daddy went to heaven. Daddy's fine. Twelve-year-old daughter's dead. That's going to be a long walk home and a lot of disappointment. And it ain't going to get any better when he gets there. All the what ifs, all the whys are all going to come home. And there ain't anything that's going to make his wife feel better. She's not going to give a rip about the crowd that was there and how exciting it was. She's not going to give a rip about Sister Watch Your Face that got saved, uh, that, that got healed after 12 years. Mark her name off the prayer list. Put her over on the praise side. Doesn't matter. We got a 12 year old bed that's going empty. When we make the evening meal, there'll be an empty seat at the table. Let's just go bury our daughter. And by the way, where were you? You thought it was so important. You thought it was so important to go find this Jesus. She's dead anyway. How'd that work out for you, boss? Hey, I'm telling you. There's a lot of people that aren't here tonight and will never be here again because something happened real bad in their life. Legitimate bad. We get it. Real bad. And they couldn't handle the disappointment. And they walked away. As bad as that is, you think, man, that's a low point in the story. Nah, it gets worse. Just in case you could survive the hit. Just in case you could take the hit. You got your friends waiting on you. Look what happens. Jesus encourages him, though. They said, why trouble us thou the master any further? And in verse 36, as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid, only believe. If you're taking notes, that's the title of the message is only believe. Jesus turns around. I mean, it's the worst day in the world. Why, Why bother the master anymore? She's dead. It's over. Hey, friend, it ain't ever over. Coroner came to our house when I was nine years old, 929 South Main Street in Euless. Carried a bag out with a six-week-old little baby Bradley in it. And we thought it was over. I can look back now and just realize, spiritually, that's where my journey began. It ain't over because something horrible happens. And I'm not telling you to make light of something horrible that happens. My sister drank herself to death. Sometimes waves of bad just keep happening. But you've got to do good anyway. You've got to walk with Christ anyway. You've got to find a way to get God some glory anyway. Only believe. He's He's got a dead kid at the house and Jesus is talking about only believe. And then watch what happens. And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter and James and John, the brother of James. That's your inside three, Peter, James, and John. They saw more, did more, went went a little further with Jesus. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and seeth the tumult, and them that wept and waileth greatly. And when he was come in, he saith unto them, Why make ye this ado, and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. They're laughing at the God of creation. 
They're laughing at our Savior. They're laughing at the king of the Jews, the one who fulfilled all the prophecies of the Old Testament, all the things that didn't make sense, made sense in Christ. You could almost hear the atheists of the day. Psh, your Bible doesn't even match up. Oh, your holy book. It doesn't even match up. It says that this king of the Jews is going to be born in Bethlehem, except where it says he's going to be a Nazarene. So he's going to be from Nazareth, and yet he's born in Bethlehem. We won't even talk about the fact that God said he was going to call his son out of Egypt. Wow, you believers, y'all really got it all pulled together. How's God going to work that out? Well, I'll tell you. A guy named Cyrenius started a taxation. Everybody had to go to their homeland. So out of Nazareth, these Nazarenes, they came down to Bethlehem for the taxation. So Jesus would end up going back home eventually and be a Nazarene. Not a Nazarite, not some long-haired hippie. Looks like Barry Gibb from the Bee Gees. Some sodomite in the Reformation period drew that nonsense. And we get it locked in our brain. God ain't for that. You can believe the Apostle Paul when he said that, that, that it was an abomination for men to have long hair. It was just a shame. No matter how cool you think mullets look. I had an epic mullet. God has a sense of humor. <laughs> Pride cometh before your mullet falls out. <laughs> so, the, so the word of God was right. He was a Nazarene. And yet he was born in Bethlehem. And then when Herod decided he wanted to kill the baby, he's trying to get the baby killed. So they run up into Egypt. Herod dies and God sends word and calls him out of Egypt. See, we have a God that does the impossible. Amen. And that's real good news when you got a 12-year-old dead kid laying in, in, in the room. But all the neighbors, all the friends, all the loved ones who thought they were just extreme, Jairus, oh yeah, Jairus, he's leader in the synagogue. Big deal. What are y'all, fanatics? What, y'all got to be there every time the doors are open? Psh, cult. What's wrong with you weirdos? Every time the door is open, don't you have to go to work tomorrow? Don't you people work? Oh, out knocking doors in the middle of a pandemic, you bunch of freaks. Yeah. <laughs> and they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, aren't you glad he put them out? Yeah. By the way, if you've got people that are laughing at your faith, get them out of your life. Amen. Witness to them and then send them on. Right. They don't have to go to hell aggravating you. Yeah, hey, help them get saved. Amen. But if they ain't having it, don't have them. Right. A whole lot of your life has to do with influence. Be careful who's got your ear. Be careful who's got your ear or your... Was that a cowbell? <laughs> Amen. He put them all out. He taketh the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him that'd be Peter, James, and John, and entereth in where the damsel was lying. Soon, the distractions won't matter, the delays won't matter, the disappointments won't matter, and the stinking doubters outside that are still yucking their stinking jaws, they're not going to matter either. And now we're caught up. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talithi kumi, which is being interpreted damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of twelve years. And they were astonished with a great astonishment. And Jesus, just to make sure that everybody around would know about it, he charged them straightly that no man should know it. <laughs> Sometimes irony is ironic. <laughs> Go back and look at how many times Jesus said, Now don't tell nobody. Make sure no man know it. First thing they did, they published it abroad. Everybody knew. Yeah. But tell everybody to go out and go soul winning. Whatever. <laughs> and, he, and just to prove she wasn't a, a, a ghost. And he commanded that something that should be given her to eat. You know, the people outside. Oh man, can you believe that? Earl, go get your go get your shovel. 
Hand it to him. Make him dig the hole. Make him dig the hole. We sat here and we watched her cry. She cried her eyes out waiting for her husband to come back. That little girl was screaming for daddy. Okay, make him dig the hole. Don't help him. Don't help him. I guess that Jesus is here. What good's that doing? About that time that door opens up and that little girl comes out with a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and just skips right by them all. And he shut all of their mouth. You know why I got Here's the deal. It's hard to argue with results. Now listen, people are watching you. They may think you're weird. You may be weird. In fact, I hope you're weird. I hope you're weird. Don't be like the world. Amen. What this world calls normal is just a bag of vomit. Amen. Hey, Amen. be willing to be weird. Right. But don't give up because of some distractions. Don't give up because of some delays. And listen, in this life, you're going to have to take some punches to the gut and maybe some to the kisser. Don't you quit because of some big time disappointments. They're coming. You got to know they're coming. Yes, just, just be ready. Amen. When it happens, don't be like, what happened? You go, oh, that's what preacher was talking about. Pastor Manley talks about this all the time. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. What do you do? I'm going to call my church family. Amen. Hey, my neighbor, my, 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 my kinfolk, they all think we're idiots. But our church family, they get it. Amen. I'm going to call my church family. We're going to get on that prayer list. Hey, God's going to help us get through. And you know what? Hey, you know what we're going to do? Everybody's going to know about the problem. They're going to be watching. And they're going to be running their stinking mouths. But we're not going to let the doubters win. We're not going to get the doubters. Uh, we're not going to allow them to have us take an exit somewhere. We're going to listen to Jesus who said, only believe. Be not afraid. Only believe. Friend, I wish you could skip most of the chapter. I wish I could skip the chapter. And just for the sake of time, let's just get on to that. Sometimes you got to earn the answer to the prayer. Hey, God does all the work. But you got to earn the blessing sometimes by being faithful, by having a testimony. What nobody laughing at Jairus' faith anymore. Amen. Nobody was laughing at Jairus' faith. And all of a sudden, Mrs. Jairus, she knew she had her a man of God who knew the answer and he knew where to go. And they were sure thankful that they didn't quit. Can I tell you something tonight? When you make it through your problems, as I get older, the older I get, the more thankful I am that I didn't quit during some of the problems. Amen. Now, I'm just the goofy guy that says funny stuff and that's fine. You don't need to know about the tears. You don't need to know about the hurt. Just know that I live a real life just like you do. And God is good. Amen. And God is worth it. And God is more powerful than all of our problems. Amen. And there's not one sin that the blood of Jesus Christ cannot cover. Amen. You stay faithful. Amen. Be not afraid. Only believe. But what else do I have to do? Just believe. Believe that He will. Believe that it's going to be okay. You go, but what if, what if we die? What if they die? Meet you in heaven. Amen. You're going to threaten me with heaven? Right. I'm competitive. I'm real competitive. I tell our church family, I'm going to outlive every one of you outfits. I will conduct every one of your funerals and I will tell every funny story on you. We're not going to cry through your stupid funeral. We're going to laugh it up and have a good time. And if you accidentally outlive me, I will beat you to heaven. Either way, I win. <laughs> Why? Because no matter how bad it hurts, no matter how hard it gets, it's going to be okay in the end. So how, how do you want to be remembered? Do you want to remember, remember it as a quitter? Or do you want to be remembered as the person who encouraged others by never... Never quitting. Amen.